Hey, Aaron Rabinowitz here for Red Giant TV. The feedback that we've gotten for Seth Worley's tutorials has been awesome. You guys love explosions and shooting and punching and what happens when nature attacks. So naturally, in this episode of Red Giant TV, we're going to do something entirely different than the stuff that you've been asking for more of. In this tutorial, Seth will show you how to create this awesome comic book credit sequence. You'll learn how to create a... You know what? Enough of the comic book exposition. To the Batmobile! And by that, I mean... Take it away, Seth! First issue credits. Step one. Stills. Uh, first, basically what I did was I've got this project I did called Romance Now. And I have several different stills that I am using for this. I have a comp here that's uh, 1280 by 720, 23.976 frame rate. And I'm going to name it to Main Comp. And we're going to come back to it. First, we're going to pick out um, each of our shots we want to use. I like this one. And I'm going to pull it into its own comp. And then I'm just going to repeat that for all of these different stills that I like. Step two, dimensionalize. I'm going to work basically in each of these comps and I'm going to make them 3D. So you want to uh, uh, duplicate the layer and then cut a mask out of uh, your foreground, starting with your foreground. And you can kind of cut it into as many different layers as you want. So I've got my, uh, my foreground here. Very front foreground is going to be the tape and the hand. So I'm going to cut a mask around the tape and the hand. And uh, when that's done, I'm going to duplicate my background layer one more time. And I'm going to and I'm going to cut out the arm, and then I'm going to duplicate the background layer again, and I'm going to cut out uh, Darren, his body and his head. Then I'm going to double click on the background layer, and I'm going to use the clone tool, the stamp tool, uh, to basically erase Darren as crudely as possible. Uh, hold Alt and click the part of the picture that you want to you know, clone and just keep this process going until you have a really terribly erased Darren. See? Look how beautiful that is. That's like ready to go. Uh, the reason it can look terrible is because we're going to be applying Tunit and also some Fast Blur and stuff. So we'll go ahead and do Fast Blur. We're going to add Fast Blur to the background layer because we're going to simulate depth of field and repeat edge pixels for superstitious purposes. Turn uh, blurriness up to about 22, let's say. And that looks good. Now we're going to make all the layers 3D. I'm going to create a new camera so that we have you know, our guaranteed perspective for later. And we're going to go to the start with the bottom background layer and we're going to move it back, way back. And we're going to then increase the scale to where it's filling the frame again, about as much as it was before. And while we're doing this, let's go ahead and apply CC Repetile. And we're going to select uh, Tiling to be Unfold. And we're going to expand um, on all directions. We're going to expand in all directions. Uh, and then we're going to, this way, you know, it has a bleed room, you can see. All right, so once that's done, uh, we're then going to uh, start moving our other layers back. So we'll go to the next one up, which is Darren. Move him back, and then we're going to uh, scale him up to fill frame again, and then repeat that again with the arm. Uh, and with the arm, we're going to do something a little tricky. And it's good in each of these shots to do something, something quote unquote tricky. And with this one, uh, I'm actually going to rotate the on the y, rotate it on the y axis, axis, axis on the y-axis so that it will then, when the camera will move about, it will look as if the arm gives a little bit of a 3D uh, look to the arm, so it's not like a, you know, just a flat layer. Uh, it's bleeding through the tape there, so we'll move it back a little farther. There we go. And now we'll leave our tape at zero, and we want to move it. So now you look, and it looks pretty cool, 3D. So, and it can stay crude. Again, it's non-screen very long. Step three, repeat this endlessly. Uh, we'll go through all of our, our different screenshots and we'll three-dimensionalize them this way and blurring the backgrounds and crudely erasing them and doing all sorts of things.
step four, reconvene all of our stills together. We're going to bring all the comps that we've created down into our main comp, and they're all there together. And then we'll create a new camera. We'll make it 35 mil. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, our next step is to collapse these uh, layers. So what's cool is we'll select all of these, and we're going to select collapse transformation. Collapse uh, this little guy right down here. And that, all of a sudden, everything's all jumbled up together. Don't worry. You're going to see what this did in just a second. First, uh, make all these layers 3D. And then our next step is to create masks. So let's go ahead and uh, mute out all of our layers but one. We're going to work with each of one individually. And we'll create a mask, a square mask, around uh, here to look, you know, similarly, it's basically to create what was originally the original frame. And we'll do that to all of our layers. And then we're going to create our layout by moving each of them about to where there is this little bit of border in between them. Um, and check this out. Let's move our camera around. And you see, look, it, we now get that, that, you know, we see that spatial relation between the background and the foreground and uh, that 3D, and it's all contained within this mask. So it looks kind of like little, these frames are these little windows into each of these shots, which I could just do this all day. So now we'll, um, we'll create our layout um, with all of our photos and all of our stills. And uh, that looks pretty good. Now look, we moved the camera about. Seriously, all day I could do this. It looks just so cool. Step eight, we're going to move our camera. Go ahead and uh, do our camera movement before we apply to that nerdy thing so that, you know, uh, it's a little easier to do before we add a bunch of effects. So we'll do this basically with basic keyframing. Just go through and create a camera move. And uh, that looks uh, pretty cool. And then, you know, when we're happy with the camera move, we'll end up just uh, selecting all of the keyframes. Select all the ones in the middle. Uh, right click, select uh, keyframe interpolation, and do uh, auto bezier for all of them. So you get the little round dots. And then select the f uh, first keyframes and the last keyframes and uh, make them uh, easy ease. And now that looks uh, pretty smooth. Except that right there sucks. So let's delete that one first keyframe. Less is more. All right, so next. We're going to establish our boundaries, and what that means is we're going to create a layer, a uh, our borders from our comic book borders. So we're going to create a new solid, make it uh, light gray to white, something like that, and keep it 2D. And we move it to the bottom, and now it looks as if we have these white borders, like in comic books. You know, it's a little, not wide enough, so it's a lot solid settings, and a little wider, and that's better. Now they look like comic book borders. Step ten. Now we tune it. We're going to use Red Giant Tune It to, uh, we're going to go into uh, basically each of our individual comps. We'll go in there and add an adjustment layer and apply to this adjustment layer. We'll type Tune It and then we're going to get the uh, Tune It Roto Tune. Drop that onto our adjustment layer. And then Animation Presets, we're going to go down to the Graphic Novels preset. And that looks pretty cool. Then we're going to apply a Hue Saturation and we're going to click Colorize and then We'll adjust our hue to whatever color we want it to be colorized at. Um, so it looks pretty cool. And then basically you'll go and repeat that for all... Oh, first, this looks terrible. And it's uh, the way to fix this with these the adjustment layers showing up. Basically make it 3D and then scale it up to be really big. And uh, just ridiculously big. And that fixes it. So now just repeat that. Apply that same adjustment layer with, uh, and you know, you can copy and paste the adjustment layer into all of these different comps and change this, adjust the hues to each comp until you have a pretty cool looking sequence. Now, introduce some sparklers. We want to make this even more dynamic. In this picture, Darren is holding two sparklers. So, we're going to actually um, turn off Tune It, just for now, and then go into our main comp and mute out everything but Darren's layer just to, you know, just to go easy on our processors. And uh, once that's done, we'll create a new solid in our main comp. We'll call it Particular. And uh, we will hence apply Particular. And once we've applied Particular, we're going to go to our Animation Presets and we're going to select Self-Destruct. Well, I'm going to select Self-Destruct. You can get Self-Destruct from RedGiantPeople.com. I have uploaded it as a pretty cool preset there, inspired by something obvious. So 
once that's once that's there, we'll bring that down and uh, our emitter and uh, position it to where the sparkler would be. I go into motion blur down here under rendering. Select uh, to disregard camera motion. Uh, you'll thank me later. Now uh, we'll continue. You know, make sure that it's in the right place. Uh, turn our velocity up a little bit, and then uh, you know it, we want a little more visibility out of the sparkler. So we'll open up particle and we'll increase the size a little bit, and then we will change the color to blue and then even desaturate it even more. So that's pretty cool. Uh, once we've done that, go ahead and duplicate that particle, that particular layer, and drag that emitter over to where the other sparkler is. And once that's done, we're going to want to add a flare to the sparklers. So we're actually going to use a uh, Null's 3D flare. So we're going to go up and create a new light and we're going to call it flare one a one flare one and turn that off and then create another light name it flare two and then turn that off now what we do here is we're going to make sure that our positions of our lights match the positions of the emitters uh, the particle emitters so we'll go in and manually copy this here so then once our lights are positioned in these same locations as our emitters we're going to uh, select Flare 1, go up to Window, down to Null 3D Flare, and then click Light Factory Easy, and it creates a brand new solid. Uh, it creates our Flare layer perfectly that will track the light. And do it again for Flare 2. Select Flare 2, select uh, Null 3D, and then Light Factory Easy, and it immediately uh, assigns a flare to that light location. And that looks pretty awesome. We're going to have to have it flicker though, so let's go ahead and alt click the uh, clock next to intensity in our lights. Type wiggle and then, in and then next to it parentheses 10 comma 75. And then now it should be flickering pretty well for a sparkler. And then do the same thing for uh, your other light. So, and then here you can select, you know, in your, your flare type, whatever you want, as long as it matches the other one. Uh, they both need to be set to the same flare type in the match. So once that's done, go back and turn Tune It back on, and then copy that hue saturation layer you have in that one, uh, and apply it to the particular layers, and then apply it to the flare solid layers up here. So they all match the color eyes of the, uh, of the still. That looks pretty awesome. Step 12, accent the eyes. Here's another little bit of a craziness we want to add. In this shot of Darren's eyes, we're going to have some reflection actually move about. So let's go to the first frame of the comp. Let's turn the adjustment layer off for now. Let's find the layer that has Darren's glasses. Double click on it, make sure we're on the first frame. Select our paintbrush, make it uh, black, and have it be in a, a darken for mode, and opacity up at 100. And then let's paint and turn these, sun, these glasses into sunglasses. Filmmaking is basically the practice of lies, full on lies. So we're going to paint these sunglasses on. And then once that's done, uh, let's paint a glare in. So let's change, you know, to almost white, light, light, light gray. Let's go down and make our mode add. And then we will draw these really crude, terrible looking glares into the sunglasses. Once that's done, let's go to our main comp and find exactly the frame that our, you know, our pan camera movement begins. And once we've found that, we'll go back to the stills comp where it's in the same location. Go down to effects, paint, and then brush six and brush five appear to be our glares. So we're going to open those up and we're going to keyframe the position and scale in, within transform of those brushes. And then we'll go We'll move it all over to the left, mess with the scaling a little bit to make it still fit within the frame of the sunglasses. And then we'll do, the same. we'll do that for both glares. And then when we've got that, we're going to go back to the main comp and find the very last frame of that pan and go back into that uh, comp and move our glares over to the right 
and scale and mess with their scaling to still fit within the sunglasses. So now we've got a, a keyframed movement of the glares to where they will move across the sunglasses um, with as the camera pans across, simulating you know moving reflection. And now the beginning of that shot requires it to, you know, we we move down to that shot and then we move down out of the shot. So we need to then keyframe the lights to move with those with the very beginning of the camera move and the very end of the camera move. So we'll go in and you know after the pan has happened we'll go in and now move our glares down and then we'll go back to before the pan happens and we will move the glares up. So then once we have that then we're gonna select all of them set them to easy ease just to be safe. And then we'll go back in and that uh, is a pretty cool move. Looks pretty looks pretty cool. It's convincing enough. I mean, it's not convincing without tune it. So we'll turn tune it back on and we'll look at it and we will be amazed at how awesome it looks. Once that's done, our next step is to add some text. So uh, first go to houseindustries.com slash free download and they have this uh, free font pack there. It's three fonts and house slant is what we're going to be using. And uh, so we'll go into one, our last still, type the end. And then we're going to create a, uh, a shape. So make sure no layers are selected and we'll draw a shape. And you see that our stroke and fill are set here where fill is set to be yellow and the stroke is set to be about seven picks of black. And so We'll create that, we'll move that underneath the text. Make sure the text is a very dark gray, not black, just very dark gray. Um, and uh, adjust that shape to look right. And that looks pretty cool. So we'll make sure those are also 3D layers too. And then, look, looks pretty awesome. So then we're actually gonna go and we'll apply this, these same things to any of the frames that we want to. Our next step is to apply looks. So we'll apply an adjustment layer to our main comp and we'll tile it looks so we don't get confused. Some, you can tell I'm very inconsistent in naming my adjustment layers. Um, so it's okay to be sloppy, kids. It's not really okay, but I am. Uh, looks, click edit. This opens up. I'm gonna apply a look I already have made from another project uh, called Tatooine and um, once Tatooine is applied, we are done, and it looks pretty sweet. So step 15 is to watch it. Look at that. You should be proud of yourself for watching me do this. Talent. Wow, this tutorial reminded me of a very lonely and painful period of my life in high school. Thanks, Seth. If you enjoyed this tutorial and you want to learn more about Seth and his work, check out his site at sethworley.com. There's great stuff there, including his web series, Adventure Now, and The Time Closet. Don't forget, you can always download a free trial of any of the Red Giant products that Seth used in this video at redgiantsoftware.com. And you can get tons of free presets for Red Giant plugins on redgiantpeople.com. In fact, Seth has been putting up a bunch of presets that he's created through his work as a director and as both a visual effects and motion graphics artist. Speaking of free, check out Colorista Free and LUT Buddy, two free color correction plugins that we're giving away for, that's right, free. You can find those at redgiantsoftware.com. Finally, I want to mention that if you're looking to keep up with what we're doing at Red Giant, whether it's a tutorial, a contest, a product release, or whatever, just follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and on our blog. Once again, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz for RedGiantTV.com. See you next time.